Three Chefs, One City looks at the world's great food destinations through the eyes of three of its influential and happening chefs. And right now, we're in Toronto, Canada. Toronto is a city that really punches above its weight on the food scene. And with chefs like Jackie Lin, it's easy to see why. Shoshin refers to craftsman's heart. I picked that name mainly because uh, I think I was taught the way that I had to use a lot of heart and put it into my food. I just like what I do. I never thought of doing something else, just really. I think I started at a young age, and I get a lot of attention doing that, and I probably like it. It's amazing how the selection of seafood available to Toronto has grown. I like to start my morning with uh, choosing my own fish, and I'm going to show you how to choose the best Japanese fish in the city. Let's go. I do trust my supplier a lot, and uh, I think uh, you have to have that mutual trust that uh, you're happy using their ingredient and, and, and they're happy getting you the best fish in the market. We live in our regions and often have narrow ideas about selection. The variety of seafood that comes out of Japan and other waters is astounding. I have to find a market like this. So this one called Nodokuro or Akamuzu in Japanese, black throat sea perch. So look at the shape of this fish. It's very, very full, like it's not skinny handsome. And then when you touch the fish, it bounces back right away. When you touch it, you want to feel that stickiness of the fish, but also it, it's not like glue that really sticks together, and that would be too old. I mostly use fishes from Japan. Even if the fish is in season due to weather, uh, supply, you can't get them. That's why I always have 15 to, to, to 17 type of fish, and to each different seafood that I could make probably two to three kinds of, of, of things out of it. So this is sayori half beak, half beak therefore, right, only half of it, the seasonal fish in winter time and early spring. This is uh, supposed to be very firm fish. So when you touch it, as long as it's firm and it's good. This is a small sea bream, a spring sea bream. This fish is actually very significant to Japanese cuisine because the color of Red and white, it actually resembled the flag of uh, Japan. It's also white fish, so very easy to eat. You can see it's very, very, very shiny. Um, and the scales are all on. Sometimes when you touch it, when the scale is so still like hard and stuff like that, it's a very, very fresh one. Great tips. I'm ready to buy some fish. So these are, uh, uh, well, sashimi garnishes. This is the flower of this one right here. A little bit minty flavor, and that's the flower of the shiso leaf. And this one, it's called Benitade. It's like a sprout that is spicy, a little bit bitter, and goes very well with the fish that is a bit oily. This is called, this is my favorite. Uh, this is called Sancho, uh, a prickly leaf. Prickly, it's like a uh, pepper, uh, but it you know it make, makes your tongue numb. So this is Japanese wasabi, well from Japan, and from uh, a prefecture called uh, Shizuoka. Wasabi grows from mountains, like streams and stuff. And it, it, the requirement is you have to have very very clear water. This is a very good one. Um, if you could see, it's really purple here. The purple, the better. This small wasabi takes three years to grow. So it grows a little slow, but three years would be perfect for eating. So I'm gonna buy some. With this much insight on buying seafood, Jackie must have a lot to say about eating it. You have to take care of your customer, but see if they're happy, see if they got any opinion, uh, how to improve on the restaurant, as well on the relationship with them. I think it's important for every chef to uh, carry on the tradition from, from the master and then do a little bit of modification on your own to really suit your own style. Everyone's just different, they think differently, uh, they do differently. Always stay humble, that's for sure. And in fact, my sensei, my, my, my teacher, uh, told me that you know, I need to stay humble. I'm not really a humble guy, he thought. So, I'm gonna show you how to prepare the wasabi that I just bought. The stem, first of all, cut it off a little bit, like trim it off. I'm just scraping off the outside of the wasabi so I get the pure taste of it. So I have two grater here. This is shark skin and this is copper. So the finer the grinder is, uh, the better the flavor would come out. 
from the wasabi. And do it round. Sometimes it's so spicy, and when I'm doing this, it'll make me cry. So do it a little bit at a time. Just estimate how much you're gonna use it for. What I'm doing right now is just trying to do something that makes people see that I put a lot of effort into trying to perfecting something. And I'm gonna show you how to prepare the king. I think in this world, nothing is perfect. In fact, the imperfectness, it's actually perfect. So next step, after the, it's been filleted, I'm gonna salt it on a bamboo colander. Okay, put it like this, round. Make sure it's got enough salt on the skin side as well. A lot of fish would be considered a little fishy. Uh, so in the ancient way, in the uh, 100 years ago, so what they do is they put salt over the fish and draws out the excess moisture and that fishiness within the fish is what actually comes out. So if there's no, if there's not much moisture, it won't go bad easily. So now I'm gonna do it for about 30 minutes or so. How do you keep such a high quality every time is a key to how people perceive your work. So the moisture is coming out. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna wash it in water and squeeze a little bit gently. Remember, gently is the key word. So it pulls the moisture right out. So after I wash it in water, I have to wash it in vinegar. So if I put the kohada in the salt for 30 minutes, then I'm gonna put the kohada in the vinegar for 30 minutes as well for the balance of it. I always believe life is just a balance of hard work, passion, both are so important. If I still have the same passion, if I still put the same amount of effort uh, into my work, into my customers, I'm better than I was five years ago.